Hey everybody, my name is Mark Showalter. I'm a research scientist here at the SETI Institute in Mountain View, California. I'm also a member of the New Horizon Science team. And we're uh, here today uh, to talk about the Our Pluto campaign. It's a campaign we launched on Friday that is going to allow basically everybody in the world, we hope, to uh, have their say about what we use for the names of features on the dwarf planet Pluto and its very large moon Charon when we get to see them up close this coming July. Uh, my guest with me is uh, Kathy, Kathy Olkin. She is the uh, New Horizons Deputy of Project Scientist. Uh, she works in, in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, hi, Kathy. Hello, Mark. Hi, everyone. Yeah, it's good to have you. Uh, I thought maybe we'd uh, get started. We're going to talk a lot about the names of the things that we're about to see on Pluto, uh, those things that we were naming that we don't know what they are yet, but we need the names now. Uh, but I thought maybe we'd start with just a real quick summary of what uh, the New Horizons Project is all about, and you're the perfect person to do that. Thanks. Yeah, I'd love to tell everyone about the New Horizons mission to Pluto. So we're going to... Uh, We've sent a spacecraft to Pluto to explore this planet that's never been seen before. It, it is just a point of light in our, even our largest telescopes from Earth. And so we want to get a close-up look at the geography and the composition and the atmosphere of Pluto and its satellites. The New Horizons spacecraft is about the size of a piano. And it was launched in 2006, and it takes about nine nine and a half years to travel across the solar system to get there. So we're approaching Pluto now and we'll have a closest approach uh, on July 14th this summer. Can't wait for it. It's been a long time coming. So as we fly by Pluto we're going to aim all our cameras and our instruments at Pluto and the satellites to learn all we can about this system and then we'll continue on exploring the solar system. Great, thanks Kathy. So um, one of the things we are dealing with on the team is that when we get there, we're going to have a very interesting uh, terrain, a very interesting surface of both Pluto and Charon to look at. Uh, we know from our best telescopes that uh, Pluto has some very, very dark areas, maybe as dark as asphalt. It has some bright areas, maybe as bright as snow. It has some orange colored areas and some white colored areas. Uh, those are the best we can determine from our telescopes now, but what they are pointing to is a very, very interesting and very, very alien landscape. And when our geologists start to bring that, uh, when we start to see that in, in close, sharp focus, we're going to need to talk about all those features, craters, mountains, chasms, uh, maybe volcanoes, whatever they might be. And uh, when we start seeing those things, the way to talk about them means they need to have names. And we can't be just pulling names out of our hat right and left in July. We're going to be too busy uh, to even think about all of that. So we're basically creating our bank of names in advance. And that's what the Our Pluto campaign is about. So if you all want to go to Our Pluto, O-U-R-P-L-U-T-O, uh, ourpluto.seti.org, uh, HTTP colon slash slash, et cetera, uh, you'll see our website. It's a uh, place where you can uh, go in. We have uh, three different ballots because we're collecting names uh, through a variety of themes, and uh, maybe we can talk about that if people have questions. But uh, we have a list of names that people can vote on. We're also accepting nominations. Uh, we are also, uh, just because it's kind of fun and we want everyone to be involved, we set up a kid's ballot, which is a much... Uh, simpler way to just look through some pictures and, uh, and vote on things that you like and we'll choose names to put on the map of Pluto based on the things that the kids of the world vote on. So, uh, see, I'm not seeing any questions yet, uh, so maybe I'll just talk a little bit more about it. Uh, when the um, team got together and started to think about, well, how do we want to name all these features? We know we're going to have a very uh, colorful and interesting landscape to look at. Uh, the way this is normally done is you work with the International Astronomical Union, the IAU. You define a set of what are called themes, and we might say that uh, all the craters on Pluto might be named after, say, uh, places, names of the underworld in uh, different mythologies of the world. We might say that mountains are named after fictional travelers or something like that. And so we've identified this set of themes that we're going to use now. We will assign a theme to a feature type when we get to Pluto. But meanwhile, we're talking about things that have to do with the underworld. That's uh, The reason for that is that Pluto is the Roman 
deity, the Roman god of the underworld. Uh, that was the name that was chosen by Clyde Tombaugh way back in, uh, in 1930. So, uh, so we will use that name and names associated with that for part of it. We'll also be using the theme of exploration. Uh, there is a lot of literature about exploration, everything from Star Trek to Star Wars to the earliest fiction we have in the world is something called the Epic of Gilgamesh. And uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh is on our ballot if people want to think about some of the great stories that uh, have been told by the ancient Mesopotamians and all the way up to today. Uh, so. so, Mark, I'd be happy to talk some more about uh, the New Horizons spacecraft and some of the instruments while we're waiting for some questions. Sure, please do. I, I see you have a model. That's cool. Yeah. So we have a 3D model of the spacecraft, and this model is available online for people who have 3D printers. And so this, uh, this is the antenna, and so this will transmit the data back to Earth. And we have multiple cameras. There's one here and here. This is, works in the visible and the infrared, and this is a visible light camera, and this is an ultraviolet camera. And these... Um, cameras and other instruments, in situ instruments, will take data on the Pluto system and they're going to transform our understanding of the Pluto system such that we now need names for features that we don't even know about today. So we're going to learn a lot and we want to be able to name those features based on the data that we get back from the spacecraft. And we'd love to engage the public and that's the, the purpose of the our Pluto site. So uh, please submit some names yeah, Kathy, it looks like we have a question. Uh, this is okay. Someone is writing in. Can I submit my child's name or any name? Uh, well, um, that's actually a good question. I suppose if you've named your child uh, Persephone, uh, who is the wife of wife of Hades in Greek mythology, or uh, or perhaps uh, some other underworld deity. Maybe I hope you didn't name your child after an underworld deity. But if you did, then yes, you can submit your child's name. But otherwise, we're actually looking for the names that come from uh, a much broader swath of the world's, uh, the world's uh, literature and history and mythology. So, uh, so if, you're, if your daughter's name is, uh, is Betty, um, I don't know of any goddesses named Betty, I'm afraid, so it probably wouldn't work. Uh, there's another question here. Do you have any favorite names that you would like to see chosen? Kathy, why don't you take that one? Sure. Um, I'm just so excited to get to Pluto and see the features that I'll be <laughs> happy with whatever we call them. So that's why I'm so excited about this campaign, so that the public can help inform us uh, of what they would like them to be named. And uh, so I'm, ex I'm excited to see what names come out of the, the public naming campaign. Yeah, and in my case, I mean, uh, well, of course, I have I have some ideas. I uh, if you if you read the uh, there's a news feed on the website where I've been writing about the uh, various nominations that have been coming in, and of course, if if a nomination has come in and we decide to uh, to add it to the ballot, is because at least some of us think it's kind of interesting. So you might get a little bit of sense of the names that appeal to me if you if you read the news feed. But beyond that, I sort of feel like I'm the, the election commissioner. It's my job to uh, make sure that things happen fairly and that we uh, cover uh, cover as much literature and mythology as we can. Of course, it's also very important that we cover all the cultures of the world, that we have lots of names uh, associated with women as well as men. Uh, diversity is very important in our in our selection of the names. So, uh, so I'll be focusing on that quite a bit. But uh, I probably shouldn't speak up specifically about what are the names that I like. If you read the, if you read the blog, you might you might get some sense of that. Though I'll have to admit that. Uh, another question to come in: What types of features do you think might be discovered, and when will the clear photos start coming? Maybe Kathy, you can speak to when we'll start seeing the really good images. Yeah, that'd be great. I so. Uh, we get closer every day. The spacecraft is traveling at 14 kilometers per second. Now those aren't units that people usually talk about for velocities. People usually talk about the speed of their car as 55 miles per hour or something like that. But the spacecraft is going by at 14 kilometers per second. So if any of you are runners out there, you know that would be uh, going by at uh, doing a 10K in less than a second. So we're really moving. And that yeah. means... 
Let me just add, that's about 10 miles per second uh, for people who know the uh, English units better than the metric units. That's right. Thank you, Mark. And so uh, every day we get closer and closer, but we're going to get the best pictures that we've ever had from Earth, that we've ever had of Pluto, um, starting in early June. We'll, there'll be uh, images that have more detail than we've ever seen before. And all through June, it's going to be getting better and better. So the first really good images will come with the LORI instrument, which is our uh, high-resolution camera. And then later, we'll get high-resolution color images and then infrared spectroscopy. So in June, you should expect to see better images, but really right around closest approach in July is going to be when we get the best detail. One thing I do want to point out, though, is that it takes a long time to get data back from the spacecraft. The one-way light travel time, the time it takes the signal to go from the spacecraft to the Earth is four and a half hours. And the bit rate that we transmit at is about 1,000 bits per second. That is way slower than any modern communication. Um, so we're going to have to be patient. We're going to get some data back right away, and then it's going to continue to come down. It's going to be like Christmas over and over, where we get new data sets down every month for uh, over a year. Yeah, it's going to take some patience, I, I realize. Uh, one of the things that uh, is going to be coming up in June from my standpoint is that I've been very interested in the uh, moons and maybe even if they really exist, the rings of Pluto. And uh, in fact, I was uh, leader of the group that uh, discovered Styx and Kerberos, the two smallest known of the five moons of Pluto. Uh, we're going to be looking out for more. And one of the things we're actually most concerned about come June when the images start getting to be a very, very high quality is whether there is any actual hazard to the spacecraft. Remember, this is unknown territory. We, uh, we don't know if there's a whole, for example, cloud of dust surrounding Pluto for some reason. Uh, if there is, that could be very, very um, challenging for us with a spacecraft flying through it uh, 14 kilometers per second. So uh, I and a, a smaller team of the uh, subset of the New Horizons Science team, we're going to be the ones in the crow's nest. We're going to be the ones looking out for any uh, any hazardous shoals, is, is using, using nautical terms, but any, any dust clouds, any debris rings, any small satellites, any of the things that might actually uh, be of danger to us. And if there is something of danger to us, which I kind of doubt at this point, but we have to be careful, uh, we have actually a couple of options to uh, fly the spacecraft in a slightly different way through the Pl Pluto system, such that maybe if there's a ring at one place, we can bypass it by going through the Pluto system another place. I hope we don't come to that because the best science will come if we just go full speed ahead with the plan we got. But, uh, but well, that'll be a little bit of a nail biter for those last couple of weeks of June and into July as we just see if there are any, any surprises at all in the, in the Pluto system. Yeah, and I can take the question about what types of features you might think might be discovered. You know, you talked about rings or small satellites. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the features on the surface of Pluto and its moons look like. Um, as people may know, a lot of planetary surfaces are cratered. You see craters on um, our moon. So the question is, will Pluto have craters or not? And we'll see when we get there. It may not have as many craters as you might think because it has an atmosphere and that atmosphere condenses and then goes and then uh, the, the there's seasonal change on Pluto such that the atmosphere condenses onto the ground and then goes back into the atmosphere over time which might affect how we see craters on the surface. So I think there'll be really interesting features. Features unlike those that we've ever seen before. This is a small body in the very outer part of our solar system. This is the first ever Kuiper Belt object we've ever uh, reconnoitered. And so with that, um, there'll be all sorts of uh, new things that we didn't even know to ask the questions about. So are you saying maybe that there's going to be like ice frost or something on the uh, surface of, of Pluto, Kathy? Yeah, I, I think there very well might be frost on the surface of Pluto and how that overlays perhaps the rims of craters or other features on the surface um, I think will be very interesting. Can't wait yeah. to see it. What's, it. what's the atmosphere made of? 
The atmosphere is primarily nitrogen, and so the nitrogen um, can exist as an ice on the surface and as gas in the atmosphere. And so Earth's atmosphere is primarily nitrogen also. But one thing that's very different is that Pluto's atmosphere is almost a millionth as thick as Earth's. So if you take Earth's atmosphere and take away most of the air um, and leave just one millionth of the density, then that's what you would have on Pluto. So we're talking about a whole different breed of atmosphere, a very different regime of physics. You've got cold temperatures, low atmospheric pressure. It's just a whole new world out there. Yeah. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Kathy, but I think some of our, our best Hubble data has actually shown that there are uh, changes in the uh, appearance of the surface of Pluto over the last uh, years or decade or so. Uh, that brighter areas have maybe faded, fa dark areas have changed, uh, things have maybe moved around a little bit. So it sounds to me like these are all indications that we really do have a real, um, a seasonal world, a world that is changing uh, as t the time goes by before our eyes, in fact. Yes, and in fact, uh, so the Hubble uh, Space Telescope data uh, show that there were uh, changes in the color of Pluto. Infrared data that where you can look at the composition show some indications of change as well. And most remarkably, um, we can monitor the atmospheric pressure of Pluto by watching stars pass behind Pluto and how the starlight dims tells us about the atmosphere. And the atmospheric pressure on Pluto doubled between 1988 and 2002. And so we know that there's change going on and that's one of our science objectives of the New Horizons mission is on approach to understand uh, the, any variability that might be happening in the surface or atmosphere and the system. Yes, great. Well, I think we all have, have a lot to look forward to. Uh, I think maybe we'll wrap this uh, discussion up today, but maybe we'll have another, uh, another hangout uh, sometime as this uh, campaign continues. Maybe I'll have more results from the campaign that we can talk about at that time. But until then, I want to thank you all for, for joining us on the hangout today. Bye, everybody. Thank you.